Hi, my name is Dan, and today we're going to talk about how to solve refrigerant feeding problems when you retrofit an R22 air conditioning system equipped with a fixed orifice expansion device using Honeywell Genitron 422D. Let's assume you've already completed your retrofit by following Honeywell's recommended procedures, which can be found on YouTube Genitron 422D, the no oil change R22 retrofit solution for residential AC. You may be having difficulties because your system has an orifice as the expansion device. This video is designed to assist you. Bear in mind that this video deals only with short tube orifices. If you have a capillary tube or a TXV, please look for future Honeywell videos. Safety first, so always wear your leather gloves, your safety glasses, and your safety shoes. At this point, you will need to have your gauges hooked up to both the high and low side of the system. You should also have a thermometer capable of reading the surface temperature of either the liquid line or the suction line. Allow the system to stabilize and adjust the refrigerant charge in 5% increments until the desired operating conditions are achieved. If by adjusting the charge you cannot achieve similar operating pressures as R22, low suction pressure, high head pressure, and or high superheat, it's time to evaluate the orifice. If you've never come across orifice tubes before, they serve the same purpose as an expansion valve, which is to allow refrigerant to expand and the pressure to be lowered before the liquid enters the evaporator. The orifice tube allows refrigerant to flow at a constant rate and has no moving parts. In most cases, you just need to replace the orifice tube. Either recover the refrigerant or pump the system down to isolate the refrigerant charge in the condensing unit. Refer to the chart and replace the orifice if necessary. Replace the retaining nut. Pressurize with nitrogen and check for leaks. Evacuate the system or line set and charge with Genitron 422D as per Honeywell's literature. Use your system operating conditions, suction pressure, discharge pressure, suction superheat, liquid subcooling, and compressor amps to properly charge your system. Take caution not to exceed the recommended pressures for the compressor and other system components. For blend refrigerants, pressure and temperature data will include bubble pressure and dew pressure data. To determine superheat, use the dew pressure column. To determine subcooling, use the bubble pressure column. To find average evaporating or condensing temperature, Find the measured pressure in both the bubble and dew column and take the average of the two corresponding temperatures. The chart we are showing here has the average pressure values shown for you. You can also download our PT app for Apple or Android devices, which will calculate these values for you. You will notice when you look at the chart that the 422D average pressure values will be pretty close to the operating conditions you are familiar with when using R22. I hope this brief demonstration of how to solve refrigerant feed issues when retrofitting an R22 orifice equipped residential AC system to 422D has been helpful. For complete instructions on retrofitting R22 to Genitron R422D refrigerant, use this guide. It contains a handy checklist. For complete information on AC and refrigeration retrofits, including this guide, visit the R22 Retrofits page on HoneywellRefrigerants.com.